I do is understanding uh, your methods. This is from the Mukherjee, Mukherjee Rao and Trevor study that I mentioned. This is just a plot uh, uh, from this book, uh, from their book actually. And what we see is that these early Egyptian and Nubians clustering with each other. New Kingdom Nubian, C Group, A Group, Kerma. We see the Bedarians down here. Uh, and they had this other series called Egyptian Negroes of Dynastic Age. And I'm still not clear on where that came from. Uh, and then you have some late dynasty Egyptians from the north, from Giza, and ninth dynasty, clustering, I mean, grouping on the other side. But here you have this cluster of, of Nubians in the middle, OK? All right. Here's another example. Uh, same study, only I took their data and ran it again, but get a similar picture. Okay, I've been told that I've got time. There's another study done by someone in France. Northwest African material, Saharan material, uh, something from Mali in West Africa, and the Bedarian over here, again showing an intersection of this material. Another study actually shows the same thing. Uh, where you, let me just show you this real quickly. Material from Giza, from Nubia, Nakata, all Egyptian sites clustering in uh, with some material, some old material from East Africa uh, here and down here. But the point here that I want to make is for those who want to say that there's no overlap in the metric characteristics of early Egyptians and other Africans, uh, it's not true based on this study. Otherwise, they should have been clustering outside all by themselves. And they don't do that, OK? When we talk about it. Here's a W.W. W. Howes' study, clustering with a, a technique called successive mergers. You take the two most similar, and then you add, and then you add, and then you add. In this case, the late dynastic Egyptian series clusters with Europeans. Then we use another method, clustering by successive splits, where you look at the whole group. I got 20 oranges, and I say, how can I divide them in half? So the computer divides them in half and then subdivides them. In this case, the Egyptians cluster with the other Africans and some other tropical people, Andaman Islanders from there. Here's a study that I did, 19 variables, which I happen to think is uh, pretty good. The Giza stuff still clusters with Europeans, northern Delta Egyptians, doesn't surprise me. But the Kerma Nubians, the Somali, the Bedarian form a group together, with some Khoisan, uh, and they form together a secondary cluster with Taita and Dogon, with other Africans, in other words. This little thing is called a septal aperture. It's felt to be a genetic trait. When you do an analysis of frequencies on this trait, you find out the Bedarians, 50% of the individuals, it's a very small sample here, uh, had uh, at least one of these septal apertures uh, from cargo aces during the Coptic period, 55%. Other Egyptians from Lisht, it should be Lisht, 45%, 43%. Uh, the Somali, 52 percent. Japanese, I know, 11 to 15 percent. Uh, quote unquote American Negroes, you can tell this is from an old paper, 18 uh, percent. Whites born in the USA, 5.2 percent. Anyway, what this is saying, the Northeast Africans and North Africans have a high percentage of this septal aperture, Wadi Halfa, Jebel Sahaba, and also the material that Allison Brooks found down in Zaire that's 25,000 years old. Almost all of the individuals have it too. The length, uh, the ratio of the upper, the distal segment of the upper limb to the upper limb, uh, thought to be related to a tropical body plan. We see the Bedarians here, the median values, 0.78, sort of in this whole middle of, of things. But even interestingly enough, Algerians uh, from uh, earlier periods uh, have very elongated limbs along with the Somali. I was surprised by that myself. Some DNA stuff that we all love. This is a particular haplotype. We can talk about it later. But if you look at Egypt, Lebanon, Palestine, Iraq, Egypt, and Libya, you just need to know that this 4th, 5, and 11 are haplotypes that are common in Northeast Africa and other parts of Africa. You see a certain percentage in Egypt. Uh, and uh, But the 7 and 8 are more common, as you see, in Lebanon, Palestine, and Iraq. So Egypt, once again, even the modern population is grounded in Northeast Africa. OK, I'm being told. This is the actual family tree here. What's important about this is there's one thing I want to say, and then I'm going to stop. This is uniparentally inherited. 
This is a, a Y chromosome uh, passed from father to son to son to son. This particular DNA marker here, PN2, is sort of the background, and that's what this means, is the background of 73% of all of the peoples in Africa today. 73%. The PN2 is found in West Africa and sub-equatorial Africa. I mean, or rather, I'm sorry, the P2 or M2 is, as it's called. This M35, 215M35, is what you find in the Horn of Africa up to Egypt and over to Morocco. It corresponds to the 5 and the 11 in the previous slide. This is the father of both groups of Africans. This binds the continent together, okay? So although you have Berbers with blue eyes and blonde hair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, they share, for the most part, this PN2 ancestry with people in West and Tropical Africa. This is the modern population. And they share much less of the M89, which comes off the tree, in another way. I'm going to finish here. This is an old slide. Uh, I'll just stop here. Okay, well, that's where it stopped anyway, doesn't it? Okay, all right. Any questions uh, about uh, Schumacher's presentation? Okay. You, you mentioned about uh, there being no Europeans 65 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me when they first went into Egypt? When the Mediterranean people first went into Egypt? When, when I talk about 60,000 years ago, there being no modern people in Europe, what I'm saying is the best evidence that we have for modern people being anatomically, what we call modern, anatomically modern people in any part of Europe is, is at the outside 40,000 years, okay? And when you talk about Mediterranean people, we need to talk about that later on because, uh, as I have said and tried to say, Africans don't all look alike. So some of what you're calling Mediterranean people are just some more Africans, okay? Now, you have to get your arms around that. And that's what that last slide was about with the PN2 transition. Because the, most of the people there who have that PN2 transition, that particular gene, that genealogy in its derived form is M35. For example, Berbers are M35, M81. Those people don't look like Congolese. But I'm trying to have you understand that they are carrying genealogically, in terms of their male ancestry at least, they're carrying something that ties them to the rest of the continent and does not tie them to Europe, even though physically, externally, you may say, well, gee, they look like Europeans. You understand what I'm saying? So when you ask me, when did X, uh, we don't use those concepts of Mediterranean race, Alpine race, Nordic race, all that, that's from another era. You know, there, it's descriptive, and in actual fact, you will find, uh, you can find individuals all over the, the world who might conform to one of those, those sort of categories. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So then, uh, That's so, the same thing they say about being Arab. Arab is uh, a culture, not a race. It means traveling person. Okay, but I'm, I'm trying to understand, what are you, what are you asking me? Here. Well, you ask me, very specifically, you ask me, when did Mediterranean people get to Egypt? I don't know what you mean by Mediterranean, but let me, uh, but let me repeat myself. African. No, well, there's more than one way to be African. There's more than one way to look African. There's more than one way to look Asian. There's one way to, more than one way to be Asian. That is what you have to, um, from my perspective as an evolutionary biologist, that's what you have to get your arms around. The people in southern India are just as Asian as the people in northern China who are just as Asian and the people from, as Asian as the people from the Eurasian steppes. You know, they don't look alike. And you measure them, they don't look alike. Okay. Yeah. Let me put it another way. For example, you have uh, Elizabeth Taylor playing Cleopatra. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Well, what do you mean? What are well, you talking when about? When did that sort of look into Egypt? The, the thing is, is that, number one, who, who was Cleopatra? I'm asking you. <laughs> well, well, what I'm saying, Cleopatra was probably a Macedonian. Well, she was a Macedonian. From, from, from near Greece. Yeah. Yeah, that's what right. I mean. When did people that look like that go into Egypt? Well, I don't know about Elizabeth Taylor specifically, and, uh, uh, you know, very specific.